So I think what we're seeing right now in silver with this congestive action in the low 30s is when you break out of this stuff, those two peaks at 50, historical old peaks, 1980, 2011, they're going out fast. Then likely silver is going to gush past those highs before it even pauses. And that'll, of course, what? Wake up the world. You don't even have to look at a silver chart or a gold chart anymore. Just assume they're both going to go vertical. Only this time, silver is going to vastly outpace gold. And it's got so much room to do so to even get back to, quote, what you could call normal levels. That if gold were to go to, for instance, our next level that we think there might be a, a stumble or a pause is 3,200. Mm -hmm. Well, if silver reached 2%, we'd be $66. Michael Oliver, a respected financial analyst known for his work in momentum structural analysis, has been making headlines with his predictions for the future of gold and silver. According to Oliver, the probabilities overwhelmingly favor gold in the current economic environment, making it a prime candidate for significant price increases. He explains that with rising geopolitical tensions, economic instability, and central bank policies that devalue fiat currencies, gold is set to surge as a safe haven asset. The environment is ripe for gold to experience a dramatic rise in value. When it comes to silver, Oliver is equally bullish. He believes silver is poised to follow gold's lead, with the spread between the two metals narrowing as silver outperforms gold in the coming months. Oliver refers to silver as a wild dog on a leash, noting that while it tends to be more volatile, it moves in tandem with gold over time. With silver currently undervalued in relation to gold, he predicts a breakout in silver prices, potentially pushing the metal to $60 or higher as it plays catch up to gold's gains. The recent BRICS meetings have added fuel to these predictions. As the group of emerging economies is reportedly considering a move to revalue gold and silver as part of a shift away from the US dollar. Oliver points out that such a revaluation could further drive gold and silver prices upward, especially as more nations look to gold-backed currencies. This global realignment could act as a catalyst for both metals to reach new highs. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview but first, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily videos. Enjoy the episode. The mama market, mm -hmm. the one holding the leash, didn't really drop much. But silver, like, like I'm going to jump off a cliff. Well, <laughs> we made that low. It was Tuesday a week ago. We put out a report and said, this is a bear trap. Do not, do not pay attention to this day. At that point, we were down, you know, just above uh, 30, I think it was, in the 30s, low 30s. And it had been, you know, above 32 and 33 even. So we'd had a sharp drop there. So, again, the leash went the other way. But if you looked over at gold, it was steady. And what happened? Silver's now back up pushing toward 32 now. Okay. So now, when we measure the spread of silver versus gold, it's a ratio. We divide the price of silver into gold. And so we get a percent. So silver. If you go back 50 years and plot a, a bar graph chart, which we did in the weekend report, showing the peak silver to gold spread reading that year, you'll see that in that 50-year period, 21 of those years reached at least 2% level, where silver was 2% the price of gold. In the 1980 bull market, when silver reached 50, that first time it ever did, it was up to 6.5% of the price of gold. And then it fell back down. And then in the 19, at 2011 peak, when silver again reached 50, gold was 1,900, silver reached 3 plus percent the price of gold. Silver right now is 1.189% or 1.19%, let's say, the price of gold is very cheap historically in relation to the price of gold. Mm -hmm. But when you measure the spread technically, week by week or even day by day, and create a momentum chart of it, you can even see it on the spread chart. You get up above 1.3% by much, and you're going to blow a cork, meaning silver is going to outperform gold vastly. It's going to unleash technically. 
And again, we're just below 1.2% right now. And I think there's enough things just above 1.2 to drive you up to that 1.3 plus percent level and trigger this bigger stuff. But if silver went to 2% of the price of gold, again, it's been at 2%, 21 of the past 50 years. So it's hardly an excessive thing. And gold were even, you know, just 3,000. Okay, 2% of 3,000, you do the math, okay? An all-time new high, 60 bucks, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, and I don't think gold's going to go into 3,000. A lot of people have that as a working target, some major firms. I think silver, I think gold's going, the next stopping point will be 3,200. And if silver happened to be 2% then, and the spread broke out, and by the way, when that spread breaks out, it is also a signal that the net price action of both metals is about to go vertical. It happened in 1979 to 80 mm-hmm. when the spread exploded. Silver exploded. Gold exploded too, but silver led. And it happened in 2010, latter half of 2010, prior to the rush in silver by April of 2011, where it reached 50 bucks again. The spread broke out. And sure enough, silver price unleashed at the same time, net wise and versus gold. And we have the same pending situation right now where if we break that spread out, you don't even have to look at a silver chart or a gold chart anymore. Just assume they're both going to go vertical. Only this time, silver is going to vastly outpace gold. And it's got so much room to do so to even get back to, quote, what you could call normal levels. That if gold were to go to, for instance, our next level that we think there might be a, a stumble or a pause is 3200 mm-hmm. Well, if silver reached 2%, percent we would be $66. In today's news recap, why silver investors should pay close attention to copper. For most investors, gold and silver are inseparable, like peanut butter and jelly or two peas in a pod. This mindset leads them to look at gold for signals on silver's future price movements and vice versa. Although silver's price is indeed strongly influenced by gold, few realize the significant role that copper also plays in shaping silver's price movements. To understand the price relationship between two assets, examining their correlations can be highly insightful. Not surprisingly, gold and silver exhibit a strong correlation. What's particularly striking, however, is the strong correlation between copper and silver. The strong price relationship between silver and copper is clearly reflected in long-term charts of the silver to copper ratio, which has remained remarkably consistent over time, despite periodic fluctuations around the average of six. The close relationship between silver and copper can be attributed to factors influencing both supply and demand. From a supply standpoint, silver is seldom mined on its own. Instead, it is typically a byproduct of copper and other metal mining such as lead, zinc, and gold. On the demand side, both silver and copper have substantial industrial applications driving significant industrial demand for both metals. While silver is often grouped with gold, It differs significantly in its demand profile. The majority of silver demand comes from industrial use compared to just from investment. Furthermore, the rapid growth in industrial demand for silver likely explains the rising correlation between silver and copper in recent years. In contrast, gold demand is largely fueled by investment and jewelry, with much of that jewelry also serving as a form of investment, especially in developing countries like India and China. Both copper and silver are far more sensitive to the economic cycle compared to gold. For instance, when a recession looms, both copper and silver prices tend to decline in anticipation of reduced industrial demand. Conversely, when the economic cycle is on an upswing, both copper and silver prices typically rise in anticipation of increased industrial demand. Gold, by contrast, is traditionally viewed as a safe haven asset that investors turn to during times of crisis. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview, but first smash the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and share this video with a stacker. Enjoy the episode. And a lot of the components there are commodity related, you know, gasoline prices and so forth. And If you go back through history, you'll see times where monetary inflation doesn't help. Well, for example, from 2000 to 2002 or 2007 to 9, where they inflated like crazy and cut rates like crazy, it didn't help. 
investors, portfolio managers decided to move that excess liquidity somewhere where they perceived it to be lower risk, better reward. And at those points in time, it happened to be T-bonds and gold, 2000, 2007. If you look at T-bonds and gold, they, they started a launch while the stock market rolled over. Uh, so, And the Bloomberg, for example, commodity index doesn't really correlate well historically to gold. So, you know, you think gold follows, quote, commodity inflation. No, that's not the case. Commodity inflation is when certain assets, the liquidity created by central banks, move into commodity-related sectors or commodity assets themselves and cause those prices to rise as opposed to, let's say, stock prices. You know, the stock prices have boomed for 15 years. Commodities haven't. But in 2020, late 2020, when gold had already doubled, between its low in 2015 to mid-2020, Bloomberg Commodity Index had been going down the whole time. And then when gold went into its range-bound situation, remember after the summer high in 2020, it didn't go up anymore. It was trapped. Bloomberg exploded. Well, gold had already done its thing. Now gold has reasserted itself by our metrics in March. It said, I'm, I'm launching for the next major move. Um, gold then was around 2000 Silver was just above $25. At that point, after the in early 2022, when the actually the war began, Ukraine, Russia, in February 2022, late February, in March, April, May of 2022, the commodity markets peaked. They'd already had their run up before that war event, so they like to blame it on the war event. That wasn't it. It was assets moving into the commodity category. But since then, they had a major correction. Bloomberg corrected about 50 percent of the way back to its bear market low. That occurred in 2020. That low was 58. It went from 58 to 140, and then pulled back to around either side of 100 for the last year. Been you know nothing, just sideways. Its technicals now look like it's going to reassert itself. And if that's the case, it won't take much upside to demonstrate that, to prove that, at least by our metrics. It's going to be joining gold. Now, the, one of the last times that occurred in a significant way, was the late 70s during the period of, quote, stagflation. Mm -hmm. That's when gold went from, you know, $100 in summer low of 76, $103, up to 850 by January of 1980, an eightfold move. In that latter part of that move, the Bloomberg and the CRB index exploded with gold. They didn't outpace it, but they followed it. So I think we're about in that same situation right now where, this time around, commodities are actually going to follow gold up. And it'll be one of the arenas, especially if you're a stock investor. Uh, look at the agriculture-related stocks. Look at energy-related, base metal-related. They don't correlate well to the stock market, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all look like they're going to be full participants in a commodity upturn here. So it may be a place to, if you want to stay in the stock market, look at those arenas. Back historically, and forget the fundamental argument. Just look at the historical major moves up and down in the dollar index. Now, again, we're not measuring. That's not really the value of the dollar. That's the dollar versus other fiat currencies. Okay, mm -hmm. but the dollar index trends, swing major swings, don't always. They're, they're, sometimes they're quite coincident with the stock market. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you go back and look, the last major low in the dollar index, it was it was in two thousand eight. The stock market made its last major low in March of 2009. And look what's happened from then to now in both the dollar index, which peaked back in 2022 at uh, 115. Now it's trading 103. But the broad move of that you know, decade plus, they were in sync with each other. Mm -hmm. The stock market went up, the dollar went up. Now suddenly the dollar is looking technically very vulnerable, as is the stock market by our metrics. So I'm of the view that no, uh, the dollar breaks down despite the breakdown in the stock market being coincident. I don't think it's going to assist the dollar at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, ultimately, I think all the fiat currencies, the major ones, are in trouble mm -hmm. to the point where at some point, and I don't think it's the kind of thing that takes 10 years to make the point, if you know what I mean. You know, a lot of trends that become crises are incremental. This one could go very quickly, I think. Whereas a lot of snapping sounds occur rapidly. Like, I think a lot of this could occur in terms of its drama between now and the end of next year, mm -hmm. uh, pretty rapidly. Because the, the technical dynamics look that way to me.
Uh, like when you start breaking some of these things that we're measuring, and again, they're not evident on price charts, uh, you'll go fast. What do you think of Oliver's take? Do you agree with him? Do you believe silver will surpass $60 in the foreseeable future as the gold melt-up continues? Or are all these predictions just bollocks? Post your honest opinion in the comment section below and share your plan with uh, fellow stackers if BRICS takes over. Thanks for watching. Now check out this video right here. It's a perfect fit for you. I'll see you on the other side.